In order to continue with our search, or radicals, or square roots, we can look at uh, two more little properties I think that come in really handy. Uh, one of them is going to be for multiplying. So here, uh, there's not really a rule necessarily, it's just kind of showing you how we can do it. So if we're multiplying two numbers, uh, two things that have square roots, so for example, uh, let's say we've got something like 2 times the square root of 3, I want to multiply that by, uh, I don't know, 3 times square root of 5. Let's just say something like this. Now the trick is, I mean, all these things need to be multiplied together. So the 2 and the root 3 and the 3 and the root 5, all of them together. But it's a nice way of looking at it. I usually look at what are the two numbers in front of the square root, these numbers first. I'll multiply those. So 2 times 3, that's 6. And then I'll work on these square roots. So square root of 3 times square root of 5 gives me square root of 3 times 5. Remember, I'm using uh, what we just did in the last video here, that you know, square root of uh, two different things is a square root of the two things multiplied. So in this case, 3 times 5. Don't just write 3, 5, or else it looks like 35. So then I have 6 times square root of 15. So this would be simplified. That's how I multiply two thirds. Okay, I just multiply the numbers in front of the square roots, and then I multiply the square roots themselves. I can deal with them that way. I can do something similar than that, uh, to that with, uh, for example, adding or subtracting. Uh, by the way, this works the same way with dividing, by the way. I should have actually said multiplying. We could also say or dividing. Now, if I want to do something with uh, adding or subtracting, uh, maybe I should be careful here with my notation. I should actually, um, I should actually say adding or subtracting. The reason is that uh, I don't want you to think it's kind of dividing by something. So adding or subtracting. If I'm doing that, I need to be careful. Okay, so here, for example, um, I could say need a common number. So common um, square root. So if I'm going to work with it, it's a little bit like when we're working with um, when we're working with fractions. If we want a fraction, we have to have two things with a common denominator in order to add or subtract them. Well, same thing with square roots. They need to have a common square root, so to speak. So I'll give an example here. Maybe we look at something like, uh, let's say two times square root of five, and then we can say that minus eight times square root of five. So here, for example, I'm not just adding or subtracting things here. It's like I'm I'm comparing things. It's a little bit like with uh, algebra. Remember like uh, in algebra, I'll just give you the same sort of example in algebra. If it was in algebra and I had 2x minus 8x, hopefully you'd know what to do. In algebra, you'd be uh, combining things. So in this case right here, I'd be saying two kind of apples minus eight apples, so to speak. The 2x minus 8x would be minus 6x. In other words, I'd be combining like terms. I'd be combining terms with x's in them. That would be minus 6x. And of course, I'm going to put that as an aside because, or maybe I won't even put it there actually. The reason I don't want to have it there is because I want to do the same thing here. So here in this case, I'm combining two terms that have square root of 5. So here I'm combining them. Combining like terms. That's what I'm doing here. A term is something here, this is one term, and separated by a plus or a minus, and then another term. So here I'm going to separate them, or sorry, combine them. So I want two things that have square roots of 5 in them. So I'm going to combine 2 square root of 5 minus 8 square root of 5 is going to be the same thing as 2 minus 8, all that times the square root of 5. So that's the same thing. I'm in fact factoring right now. I'm taking two things right here. I'm taking out the square root of 5 from both of them. In other words, it's going to be minus 6 square root of 5. So this is a little bit more complicated with adding or subtracting. The important thing is to combine the like terms. In other words, they have to have common square roots. So square root of 5, square root of 5, that works. If I had an example like, uh, maybe I'll make up one more. Let's say 3 square root of 2. 
uh, plus uh, square root of eight, let's just say, minus two square root of three, just to show you this. You'd think, well, right away, I can't do anything. I can't combine square root of two, I can't combine square root of eight or square root of three, because they're all different square roots. But we can actually rewrite this, because I can rewrite square root of eight as square root of four times square root of two. That I can do. And it turns out that will help me, because I'm just rewriting this line here, because square root of four is just two. So if you look at this, then I'm just rewriting the rest of it. That means three root two plus two root two minus two root three. Do you notice now I have two things that I can combine? So see, there was something I can do here, even though it didn't seem like I could, there actually was. So now I can combine the three root two plus the two root two and get five root two. And then after that, well, this one can't combine with this, so I just rewrite it. So for example, that. Okay, so that could be rewritten. This can be rewritten as this. It's a little bit simpler to look at, I suppose. So that's how we can do those.